felt like the flu. I thought I had the stomach, a bad stomach flu. So I went to the hospital, um, actually went to the doctor. And uh, they took a blood sample. And then immediately when they found out that my white cells were going crazy, they said, we're taking you to the hospital right away, right now. So um, I was in ICU, put on antibiotics, off central line and antibiotics. And uh, I knew nothing that, about how close I was to dying. One third to one half of the patients who die in a hospital die of sepsis. That comes from some of the studies that have, uh, was produced in JAMA. Of course, we have an active sepsis program. Severe sepsis is a very serious problem that we see a fair amount of. Um, the emergency room is very good at early recognition of sepsis, and most of our uh, sepsis patients come in from outside the hospital. In 2009, we used the PDSA model to develop a sepsis screening tool. We started with one nurse on one shift on one day and eventually expanded to all shifts and to all patients. It took multiple revisions over five months to look at our process and, and engage our frontline through the use of education and super users to finally put our tool into the electronic medical record. We screen patients for sepsis upon admit, at uh, transfer, at change of shift, or if we see an, a change in the patient's condition. Um, if we have a patient that's already here for an infectious process, or if we have a patient that's admitted for different comorbidities and develops an infectious process, either of those types of patients, if they screen positive, we will call the rapid response nurse. He or she can then evaluate the patient and start the sepsis protocol. That includes starting the bundle and possibly transfer to a higher level of care. One of the projects I'm currently working on is our sepsis screening tool. In our current system, it's a passive nurse-driven system that captures documentation every eight hours. In our new EMR, it will be an active screening tool, which will capture our nurse's documentation along with lab results to present the clinician with active, real-time information when sepsis criteria is met. Here on the Progressive Care Unit, we are looking at sepsis screening as our quality measure uh, for, that we're auditing on a daily basis. We had some obstacles to actually doing the sepsis screening. Work compression was one of the biggest one. Uh, the other one that we really found uh, helpful, we didn't realize that some of the staff weren't sure how it worked. So we did a little bit of re-education. Some of them said we didn't have time and we adjusted some uh, the way we assign our patients. Um, acuity wise so that the time is there and the nurses that didn't understand do understand now. Um, we've had very good sepsis results by a multidisciplinary uh, process and, uh, and working together. Medicine of course is a team sport and working together has really helped us. In the ER as a physician for sepsis we're really focusing on carrying through what was initiated at triage. Our goal is to initiate early goal directed therapy and stabilize our patients as quickly as possible. The quicker that patient's uh, reperfused and antibiotics is started, the better off they do. They have shorter hospital stays, better uh, mortality and morbidity if we initiate the therapy within the first three to six hours. In the order sets, we have uh, pre-selected specifically blood cultures, making sure antibiotics were going to get selected, the lactates, the appropriate time so that we are all on the same page with early goal-directed therapy for our septic patients. We have embedded uh, a sepsis uh, NICOM protocol um, into our order set so the physicians select it and it's there for nursing to use. It allows us to assess uh, fluid versus drug administration on patients. It's very nurse driven. Nursing had high input in the order set uh, development and the guidelines and we are not just treating um, a number on the patient, we're also looking at their whole clinical picture. Pharmacy participation in taking care of the septic patient is multifaceted. Um, on the front end, we're really trying to improve our time to administration of antibiotic by verifying the medication, um, making it and sending it up as soon as possible. So um, we have an uh, antimicrobial stewardship program in which all of our decentralized pharmacists participate in. And, um, we 
On a daily basis, we look for de-escalation um, opportunities by looking at the clinical response, by looking at culture sensitivities, and using things like PCT to streamline antibiotic therapy, and when appropriate, uh, recommend uh, converting to PO so we can decrease length of stay. On the back end, we work on multiple order sets um, by using our antibiograms so we can have institution-specific susceptibilities. And we make these order sets based on organ system, based on risk factors, based on um, the CMS measures. In the lab, we realize that we're a really important part of the, the healthcare team to take care of patients who come in with sepsis problems. So as soon as we get the blood in the lab, we process it as quickly as possible so we can provide an accurate result to the physicians so they can treat their patients. In August so far, we've done 90% um, of our uh, lactate results have been done in 27 minutes, receipt to verify in the lab. We had a survey of all our nurses to see what education they wanted. Number one was sepsis. We don't always have the time of how busy we are to have a four to eight hour class on sepsis, so we have implemented mock codes on varying units, on varying shifts, and they'll come in and practice their skill set. They do their sepsis screen. We use scenarios that are um, from current day practice or things that have happened, and it's a great opportunity for the whole team to come in and collaborate, and it just brings the overall awareness of sepsis, so they can bring it to their everyday assessment skill base. As a member of the sepsis committee, I want to tell you I've seen firsthand how early goal-directed therapy and processes we have put into place can work. We recently took care of a patient who was diagnosed with severe sepsis, who, after discharge, returned to thank us for saving his life. I'm proud of the work we do, and it's so rewarding for our staff to be a part of it. Sepsis is unique in that no one is truly spared the risk of developing the disease. As such, care for patients with sepsis must not be siloed. We as an enterprise have come a long way in reducing our severe sepsis and septic shock mortality, and we have much to be proud of. That being said, our work is never done. We should be consistently looking at how we can refine our internal operations, looking how we can partner with outside entities such as county colleagues, skilled nursing facilities, and mental health providers. As we work to improve our processes, I think the most important thing to remember is the process. When we think about how to improve, we really need to take the time to go and watch how the work is currently being done, to involve the frontline clinicians in the improvement efforts. Every month, we have a new patient story to share, because that's what moves people. That's why we do the work that we do, is because one life lost to sepsis is too many.